So for our next speaker, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Sabrina Vrager from Tel Art Amsterdam, coming up. Uh, Sabrina studied architecture at Delft University of Technology and then uh, got a master's in media technology from Leiden University. And currently she works at Tel Art uh, as a technologist. Uh, Telart is a multidisciplinary uh, agency that specializes in interactive, transformative experiences. Uh, Sabrina is also the co-founder of Creative Coding Amsterdam, so uh, I would urge you to check that out as well. It's very cool. And uh, here at This Happens, Sabrina will talk about the Terraform table, which is a interactive sandbox um, installation uh, that asks the question, should we um, shape planet Earth or other planets uh, for us humans? Um, this installation was commissioned by the Victoria and Albert Museum in London for their uh, exhibition, uh, This is the Future, I think. The future starts now. Uh, the future starts now, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think, uh, I'm so close, sorry, close, close. close. <laughs> Uh, I think it's still on, is it? Yes. So you could no check it out better. if you're uh, if you if you like it, and I'm sure you will. So take it away, Sabrina. All right. Can I use that? Yeah, sure. Because okay. I'll be standing here anyway. All right. So yes, I will share some insights into this project I will still work on at Tellart um, in Amsterdam. Um, although I have only ten minutes, I will start with a three-minute video. <laughs> The exhibition is called The Future Starts Here. It's a major exhibition here at the V&A and we've brought together a hundred projects which are shaping the world of tomorrow. So we introduced the show with this terrific quote from Paul Brillio where he says, the invention of the ship was also the invention of the shipwreck. So contained within new ideas, new inventions, new objects are multiple futures, good and bad, and they're completely intertwined um, and they all happen at once. Uh, the sand table is situated within this section of the planet. Here we're looking at questions of climate change and even going beyond the Earth. So the aspirations of some people today to colonize Mars, for instance. The terraform table is made up of a depth sensing camera and a projector above a sandbox. This allows people to, with their hands, create different topographies, different hills and valleys, and the depth sensing then tells a computer and the projector what colors and patterns to project on the sand. When we first came across this combination of a depth sensing camera and a projector and a sandbox to make a three-dimensional, tangible user interface was a project that was done around 2012 out at UC Davis. Since then, hundreds if not thousands of artists and designers have created iterations of this all over the world. Over the years, we've experimented with this combination of technologies. And now, this project that we're presenting is one where we've introduced artificial intelligence, or more specifically, machine learning, where we take thousands of satellite images from all over the world with corresponding high-resolution altitude data sets from those same places, and we feed them into a neural network, which builds an intelligent color palette of the earth and we're taking this project exhibiting it at several different places working on a next iteration and of course we intend to open source and publish about them back to the community Each time we do an experiment like this, we're looking at emerging technologies and how that might change the performance characteristics, capabilities, but we're maybe even more importantly focused on the cultural meaning of the work. And in this case, we are addressing the idea of terraforming other planets. Do humans have the right? Are they entitled to go to these pristine natural environments out in our solar system and take them over 
with their science and technology and transform them into places enough like Earth that they and other Earth life forms can live there. This goes beyond the conversation about whether it's technologically possible and presents a platform for reflection and debate about whether or not it's ethically responsible. So with the terraform table, we would like to address the concept of terraforming, which is the process of modifying um, topography and the atmosphere and temperatures to make it habitable for Earth-like life, or specifically for humans. And so, as mentioned, this could take place in the future on another planet, for instance, if we try terraforming Mars. Um, but humans have been shaping and changing the Earth for thousands of years, sometimes for the better, but too often um, it has been destructive, I guess, like mining, destructive mining and destructive farming techniques. So as Matt, uh, one of the founders of TEDART, mentioned um, in the video, um, the interactive sand table as a concept has been done many times. Actually, um, we have done it before too at Tellert. Um, it has a very successful form of interaction because of its tactility and responsiveness. So uh, when you're sculpting the sand, um, the projected image responds to you instantly. So you're sort of like playing with the projection in a way. Um, where, when we did it before, um, we focused on the magic of this interaction. This time, however, we've been treating it more as a medium. So given the interactive sand table, what can we build upon it? Um, we started to think of the height maps that this depth sensing camera is um, generating while people are sculpting with the sand as a height map data set. And inspired by the potential of machine learning algorithms, we realized this data set, which is created by the sand, could be paired with a real world data set. So we used Pix the Pix, a machine learning algorithm that went viral over a year ago with edges to catch, with cats, sorry, which you might know, might or might not know, but if you Google edges to catch, you will find out. Um, Pix the Pix works by training um, what you call neural network um, on pairs of images such as the outlines of a cat to the corresponding picture of the cat, um, as you can see in this screenshot. By showing the neural network hundreds of these image pairs, the model will have a representation of what a cat looks like based on the outlines of the cat. And so it will attempt by itself to generate a cat based on any input you give it. Um, so a little insight on the way a neural network does this. Um, so a neural network looks at all the image pairs and tries to look for patterns, but it actually looks for really small patterns, like really simple things, just the difference between black and white. Then it will combine multiple of those patterns to another bigger pattern, and it will combine those patterns into a bigger pattern, and so on, until it, re it is a pattern that is actually recognized as a cat. And so it's actually like a cat pattern. It's kind of magical in a way. <laughs> Um, but that's how it works. And this is what you call a convolutional neural network with like all these layers and becoming more complex. Um, so for any creature you draw, it will attempt to generate the corresponding cat. Um, it's not really a cat anymore, but it will try to make a cat. So we trained, oh my God, three minutes, a pix to pix neural network on uh, pairs of real-world height maps and their corresponding real-world satellite image. So we sourced hundreds of these image combinations of selected areas all over the world. With the goal, so instead of generating cats, that this model will attempt to generate a satellite image for any input you give it. So in our setup, the relative height of the sand surface, which is what you actually see here, is translated into a height map that looks similar to the height map of the data shed I showed you in the previous slide. The trained model will then attempt to generate the corresponding satellite image, as you see to the right. And as the monster cat wasn't really a cat, this is not really a satellite image. However, we can, it can distinguish what is water and what is 
beach area and like also sort of the shallowness of the water with a lighter blue and it knows snow peaks and different shades of uh, or different colors of vegetation. And note that we, we didn't program this, it just learned this by, by showing it images uh, or satellite images. Um, and as the output was showing unexpected dark spots on the sides of high mountain peaks, we realized it even distinguished shadows. So the neural network has also picked up on the shadow side of mountains. <clears throat> oh, now I'm on time. <laughs> Finally, we're projecting this generated satellite image back onto the sand. So that when you sculpt the sand with your hands, so we're back all the way to the loop, you actually generate this pix a pix uh, machine learned image right at that moment. So it's kind of like as if you're playing God and you're terraforming the earth with your bare hands. That's it. Uh -huh.